stuff first. This little vehicle is like reckless abandon in automotive form. It is such silly enjoyment, such joyous fun. You, you don't expect it to be. You don't expect this from Hyundai and Kia. I mean, now we do, but like you don't expect the Hyundai Kona. And yet here we are in a Hyundai Kona N. And you know what? Why not? Like, why not? Why not? If someone is going to carry the torch for like daring, fun, segment busting, affordable performance, why not the Koreans? God knows they're virtually dominating everything else right now. So what makes this thing so enjoyable? What makes it so much fun? Okay, well take the Hyundai Veloster, all right? This has nearly everything about the Hyundai Veloster. Same engine, everything. So it's exactly the same as the Hyundai Veloster. And now make it just a little bit more usable, just a tad more daily drivable, just a tad, not much, just a tad, and put it into a more usable form. Well, uh, okay, not a more usable form, because of course on the Hyundai website, they list this as an SUV. It is not an SUV, and I refuse to call it an SUV. And let's talk about the fact that I refuse, I absolutely refuse to call this an SUV. It's a tall hatchback and it's not a bad looking one as tall hatchbacks go. It's aggressive add-ons, it's aggressive details. Hide a heart of gold and by heart of gold I mean a completely normal Hyundai Kona that's itself a pretty good tall hatchback. But I think the Kona N sort of it looks good with these add-ons. You know, some cars, you you add stuff on to them and it's just like adding more and more kind of details. Not a whole lot different than that guy who has a 1989 Civic and just keeps adding stuff to it and showing up at the car meet and everybody's embarrassed for him, but nobody wants to say it to his face. Actually, it's 2022. Who am I kidding? Somebody's gonna say it to his face. Anyway, the Kona N does not look like that. The details work by and large, like the little spoiler, the more aggressive front end, the 19 inch wheels, it looks good like this. And so the aggressive exterior is really just a wrapper for that kind and cuddly Kona that we all know and love. It's kind of like if the Veloster N is Jamie Tart, then the Kona N is Roy Kent. It might be less dynamically satisfying but it really doesn't give a f What do you mean you haven't seen Ted Lasso? All right, so how might this be better than a Veloster N? Well, the ride is marginally better. I have it in standard mode, regular mode, and we're on the handling road right now. We're coming up to the rough patch and it doesn't destroy you. Now, you might be like, why are you in an N model and not in sport mode? Because on the handling road, sport mode could kill you. And don't even think about putting it to N performance mode. No, I'm not even kidding. You put it in N custom mode and you'll die. Now, I'm not gonna lie. There is something hilarious about driving a Hyundai Kona with a ride that can shatter your teeth. It is funny for a second and then your teeth get shattered and you're like, that was an interesting experience. But in standard mode, this is livable. You could drive this every day. I had my family in it. We went and saw the new Thor movie. Check it out. It was good. And Mrs. Jackson Hallie didn't complain all that much. We drove to the movie theater and back about 30 minutes and nobody's heads fell off and that was great. But the rest of the Veloster N formula now translated to the Kona N feels very familiar. Starting with this excellent steering wheel. This is such a good steering wheel. It's just so good. You've got the paddle shifters right here. Not that you need them because the dual clutch is smart. You've got your N mode and N custom one, your N custom two, and you've got NGS. It's just sporty perfection. And the fact that there's a giant red button here that says NGS on it, like you're in a Fast and Furious movie, <laughs> <laughs> it's just theater, and I love it. I love that Hyundai's like, whatever. Some fool might even be like, that's not cool. What does NGS even mean? Yes, the N-Grin shift, in my opinion, is 
a bit of a missed opportunity. I would have given Hyundai anything, like literally anything, for them to find a way to make an acronym out of NOS. If that button said NOS on it and you hit it and even something tiny happened, kind of like how it is now, you get like 10 horsepower boost, if they had figured that out, that would be just so on the nose perfect for this car sort of existence. I, I don't know. I think you should buy it on that alone. As it is, NGS is cool in the sense that like it has it. So the Kona N has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder making 276 horsepower and 289 pound feet of torque. And when you hit that N grin shift button, you get 10 extra horsepower, which is a number that is added to the horsepower. And you don't really feel it, but it's cool to hit the button because it has a little thing that comes up and it counts down because it's like 20 seconds. So it's exciting because of the countdown. And that power runs through an eight speed dual clutch automatic and it goes to the front wheels. Unfortunately, this car doesn't have all wheel drive. And I'll be honest with you, it's not worse for it, not, not really, and you'll see in the driving portion, but I do think that if this thing had all-wheel drive, and you're looking at something like a Golf R, and, and this is cheaper, and, and, I, and I just, I don't know why you'd buy a Golf, I mean, there's nothing like this car. If it had all-wheel drive, I mean, maybe the GR Corolla coming out or something, I don't know, but like this thing at 35, that's a substantial value, even at front wheel drive. It is a substantial value at front wheel drive and I still really like this. I'm just hypothesizing. If it had all wheel drive, it would be nuts, like just bonkers. The limited slip differential helps. It does have an electronically controlled limited slip differential and that does help. There is still torque steer, but you don't really care. You don't notice it too much. And you're so busy hitting that end grin shift because 20 seconds of 10 extra horsepower, blah, 10 extra horsepower for 20 seconds. I mean, that's all most men need, right? It's 20 more seconds, <laughs> right? Who cares? You get adjustable dampers. You have 19 inch wheels wrapped in Pirelli P0 summer rubber. You have 14 inch front brake discs vented. And most impressively on a vehicle in this price class, you have adjustable dampers that go from firm-ish, livable, like I said, to sport mode, which is really not livable, to end mode, which is utter physical destruction, like skeletal obliteration. I love that you have that breadth of choice in a car like this, in, in this Kona that costs 35.5, and, and they work, and they really work. Personally, I think the sweet spot might actually be putting it in an end custom mode and turning all of the drivetrain stuff up to 11, and then leaving the suspension in like chill mode. That's kind of like the whole NGS thing too, right? It turns it up to 11. It doesn't really do anything, but you could still turn it up to 11. These go to 11. It's just enormous fun to toss this car around. It feels microscopic on the road. It's so tiny and so compact. And I, I've never driven the, uh, what was it, the little Fiat 500 up Arth or whatever, but it's like what I imagine that to be like, except that car probably falls apart after 500 miles. I think that's why it's called the 500. This one has a warranty. It's just everything in this vehicle prioritizes fun. Turbo leg, it's part of the fun. Exhaust crackle, it's part of the fun. Extremely brutal shifts in end mode, still part of the fun. And it also distracts a little bit from the interior, which is kind of bargain basement if I'm being honest. It's like Hyundai went, let's spend all the money on the powertrain, the handling, the adjustable dampers and all that. And what's left over for the interior? Some beans? Well, sell them to a farmer and let's get some plastic. It's fine considering the Hyundai Kona starts at like just over 21 grand. It's not as fine in the model that costs 35 grand. It's a $16,000 difference. Maybe get some soft touch. 
injection molded plastic, Redline Reviews likes to say. And much like the Veloster Inn, the interior is about as luxurious as a public park bathroom. There is a ton of plastic in here. And it's acceptable in the way that a fast food place getting your order almost right is acceptable. As in, no, I'm not really gonna turn around and make a case out of it, but it would be nice if it was, you know, kind of accurate. That's sort of how it is in here. There's nothing wrong with the interior of the Kona, especially, you know, when you have the regular Kona, but this one, there's not a whole lot else making it feel special. I mean, it comes fully loaded, but you don't get the cool seats from the Veloster Inn that have the glowing Inn logo on the backrest, which, I mean, come on, that's just cool. And you also get single zone climate control, which I sort of understand because this is a smallish vehicle. So I could forgive it that. You get the typical 10 inch infotainment system from Hyundai, which is great. I generally like their infotainment systems. I think that they need to be maybe enhanced soon, but they're probably still good for the next year or so. They, they look good, they have good functionality. You also get the 10 inch digital gauge cluster. Now in the last Veloster N I had, it did not have that. It had the analog gauges and this 10 inch digital gauge cluster is a nice step up because it offers the sort of switching dials when you change modes but then when you go into end mode or your custom end mode it gives you this really cool looking kind of gauge cluster that focuses on performance and has a g meter and all that kind of stuff and that's really nice i mean that's that's a big upgrade from the veloster n i had like a year ago so i appreciate that the only downside as i said in my regular kona review is that it's just sort of stuck in the dash in a rectangular bezel. I mean, it, it just looks completely tacked on. It doesn't look like it's integrated into the instrument binnacle at all. It's just like, pfft, there's a screen. Um, so, I mean, not the coolest integration, but the graphics and the look of it make up for it. It's got basically the same amount of cargo space as the Hyundai Veloster, which is fine. But interior room for someone of my height is a bit compromised. If the Hyundai Veloster is basically a three-seater because it has that little passenger suicide door, this with me driving is also essentially a three-seater because even though it has four doors, a human being much bigger than a small child couldn't sit behind me. So if you are on the tall side or have a tallish family, you might not see much of a benefit over something like the Veloster. But you know what? If you want this car, you prioritize what it can do, and honestly, it's worth it, man. And I say that as a C5 Corvette owner because it's literally the same thing. Legendary powertrain, absolute trash interior. Throw it into N Custom 2 and go down my little handling road. This is the performance handling road, and that exhaust is on. Oh, God, that first bump is just brutal. It's just brutal. Oh, man. But this thing... It shouldn't be able to do this. It should not be this good on this road. And it's just knifing through, just knifing through the woods here. The speed limit is luckily a million. My God. Oh, that's, that's painful. And then when you slam on the brakes, oh, the downshifts. It's so good. I gotta make sure everything's still recording because it's just flying around the cup holders. If you put like a normal person in this car and did that, they'd be like, what is your is going on? What have you done to this Kona? Let's, yeah. There's torque steer. There's torque steer. There's also a limited slip differential. And there's a car driving on the other side of the road. Well, that's dangerous. Yeah, so does the limited slip differential work? Sure, sure it does. But does it still torque steer? Sure, sure it does. Do you necessarily care? Nah, not really. All right, back in the good part. One more blast down the handling. The ultra handling, I gotta give this road a new name. The ultra handling road, the sport performance road, the ridiculous road, the roads, no way. <laughs> that's so silly. Oh my gosh, this thing. Bumpy, 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 bumpy. <laughs> oh man, you would not want to hit curbing if you were on the track in this thing. Oh God. <laughs> oh, oh. oh my God, but it stays so planted. Why, why does it do that? 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Hyundai. Thank you. Thank you for staying ridiculous. Keep being ridiculous. Please keep being ridiculous because, man, it is joyous, delightful, awesome. Bury it. Go, go, go. Nasal little. <laughs> it's so angry. It's so angry. Oh, man. This thing is fun. Forgive me, I'm gonna turn it back into regular. Oh, it's a punch to the kidneys, man. But unlike some cars, I don't care. It's fine. So should you buy something like the Hyundai Kona N? Well, honestly, if you were interested in the Hyundai Veloster, but the ride quality puts you off because it is insane in the Hyundai Veloster, then the Kona N might be for you. Because as I said earlier, there is a marginal, marginal, it's very small. There is a small benefit to the Kona N's enhanced ride height or enhanced higher ride height in normal driving mode. It is not as insanely brutal as the Veloster N. The other thing is that if that appeals to you, I don't think you're gonna notice much of a difference between the Kona N and the Veloster Veloster in, at least not on public roads. You would have to be absolutely just beating on this thing to feel like there is a difference. You might feel like you are riding slightly higher because you are. I would honestly have to drive them back to back to see if it is a, a significant difference. But personally, having driven both of them, I don't think in sort of a on the road performance standpoint, let's say at legal usages, I don't think you would notice much of a difference between the Kona N and the Veloster N. So because of that, honestly, it's mostly upsides as a reason to get the Kona N. It only comes fully loaded. You get the dual clutch if you're into that. You get the heated seats. You get all the good stuff. You get the digital instrumentation. You get a lot for your money. You get four doors if that matters to you and comparable cargo space. So really the Kona N is delivering and at 35.5, as you see it here, there is not anything else in this segment of the market that kind of combines all of these strange virtues and attributes. I mean, I'm not going to stand here and pretend that it's not an odd combination, but it might be an appealing one depending on what you are looking for. The Kona N is sort of like a really practical punch in the face, kind of like getting decked by Tom Hanks. There's no crying in baseball! And at the end of the day, you might even weirdly thank him for it. Personally, I'm just glad things like this exist, and I'm glad that Hyundai is making these types of cars when so many other brands won't. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got value out of it. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Kona N and this sort of segment or category of performance branded vehicles. I applaud Hyundai for putting performance on a pedestal, putting performance on a pedestal, prioritizing performance by putting it on a pedestal. Anyway, I applaud Hyundai for making vehicles like this. I feel like so many other automakers aren't. And it's nice to see vehicles like this exist in a segment that normal people might actually use. So let me know if you think the Kona N would appeal to you or it would fit your needs. Let me know what you think of the video. Make sure you like and subscribe as well. Share it with whoever is interested in small turbocharged hot hatch performance. And until next time, ride safe, drive safe, and I will see you in the next video. All right, peace. Why are you driving right next to me? It's a terrible exhaust sound. And now it's even worse. It's worse when you go up the hill. Good Lord, why would anybody do that on purpose?